Oh, I should go back. <laughs> Everybody clock out of your employment. I just love gallery view. It's fun. I don't think Adrian's quite figured out the gallery view. <laughs> no, he didn't. Because he was definitely scrolling through us as we were talking to him today. <laughs> Trying to find you at the bottom of the list. Yeah. Hello, everybody so else. <laughs> Hi, people that are now joining. What is everyone eating? <laughs> Ice cream. <Kisses>. Oh. <laughs> Good oh, lunch, Stephanie. I just Pumpkin had seeds. Popeyes. Popeyes. Good. Maybe I should go get a snack. I had chow <laughs> mein today. I'm going to close up the sounds so good. Oh. Uh, yeah. Hi, Deb. Hi, everyone. Hey, Deb. Look what I have. <gasps> oh, oh, it's time. time. Oh, it's time for mini eggs. <laughs> yeah, I was actually wondering about that. Have they always been called mini eggs? Yeah, the I big eggs know. are nasty. Yeah, I guess the good ones are small. I always Cadbury. just call them Cadbury eggs. There's Cadbury, Cadbury eggs, like they're OG, or like big, and they're oh, chocolate, they're... and they're filled with cream. They're <laughs> gross, in my opinion. Those things are so intense. Oh, they are intense. right. So much corn syrup. Yeah. yeah. The cream eggs are gross. They're so <laughs> gross. I feel like you can eat like a few cookies or like binge on some cake, but one Cadbury cream egg does you, does you in. <laughs> like you can't eat two of them. Yeah, my mom sent me some and I was like, mom, I don't like these. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the mini eggs fun. hit. The mini eggs. They do hit. Wait, now what's, what's brand eating? eating? I mean, Cheetos? hot Cheetos with a chopstick. <laughs> oh, gosh. I remember Matt Benfell did that. It's amazing. It, I it, love that. It, it saves your fingers. Wait, are you left-handed, bro? Yeah. He acts left-handed. Wow. Oh, am I not? Am I in reverse? Oh, I'm not. No, I see you. I see you left. Well, Graham, did you see us. the BBC video? <laughs> yeah, had? someone sent me a chat. They were like, it was so cool to see, see Bram sing happy birthday on BBC this morning. <laughs> and I was all snug in my bed like I am now. Blanket wrapped around you. Pop tart. I want to make pop tarts. I like everyone got ready after Adrian class. Everyone yeah, looks so late. I didn't. <laughs> I literally just put my hair up. <laughs> I'm wearing the same thing, just a puffy jacket. No. Okay. I had to put a desk in my uh, room and reorganize my entire room, but the light's really nice right here. Yeah, the lighting is kill is killer. So hey, good. Anita, are you in front of the window? I am. Hmm. You know, I just realized that. You know, Bluetooth headphones, you can walk up to like 25 feet away and <laughs> people can here. still hear you. So I might Wait, be in the next room. What did you get? I got the Bose 700s. Mm. Are the ones that Adrian just ordered? I think so. <laughs> Adrian told yeah. us, he's like, I'm buying some noise canceling headphones like Brent so then I can just listen to loud music during my meeting. <laughs> So, yeah, he wanted to buy the Bang and Olufsen ones, of course, but I told him they weren't as highly rated as the Bose. You got to go with function over form here. Bose are the best ones I've ever tried in my life. Yeah, you know what's even better than the Bose though? They cost six hundred dollars. They are made by Mont Blanc, the pen company. What? What? Why? Mont Blanc is a pen company. And the noise cancellation in those $600 headphones is even better than Bose. I believe it. But 
the bows cost half as much. Um, have you guys tried the AirPod Pros though? Those are pretty good. I don't like in-ear headphones. Oh, yeah. They well, hurt. Seriously. I feel like <laughs> they always fall like out. An invasion. Oh. Really? <laughs> I'm like, this is it's disturbing to stick a thing. Yeah, here. also that. No, I can't handle it. Oh, I can't <laughs> think about it. I hate it. My ear canals are too delicate and tiny. <laughs> the pros. No, mine, mine are tiny too. <laughs> I haven't talked to anybody about it. Oh it's a problem. <laughs> that's, that's why delicate they ear you. canals. Yeah, you guys don't make fun of people with tiny ear canals. Mine are small too. Justice for small canals. <laughs> Man, I'm with you. Mom. I hope that's your PSA, Bram. <laughs> <laughs> um, do the AirPods Pro come with the little different rubber ear pieces, though? No. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Okay. Oh. That's what saves me. I actually prefer ear uh, pods, uh, earbuds for comfort, because like right now my ears are hot. I've been in class for three hours and I've had these on. But uh, you just can't beat the sound, wow. the, the noise canceling. Hey, let's let's watch a movie and then let's talk about what we're gonna do today. Yeah. Have you guys heard of this computer program called Cinema 4D by Maxon? <laughs> Sounds familiar. Uh, graphics artists are using this computer program to make uh, digital artwork. Sounds more D than 3D. <laughs> yes, one more D. I know it's not Halloween, but I wanted to watch this Spooky Loops because it's so good. Is it I think scary? You've seen... Oh, it's very Brenna, scary. Brenna, close your eyes. I probably shouldn't watch it. I'm fragile. Are you sensitive to horror movies, Brenna? Yeah, pretty much everything. <laughs> Even Princess and the Frog, like, freaks me out. What? <laughs> oh, you know what, though? Princess and the Frog is pretty dark in parts. I was worried about my Wait, kids. The spook, the spooky guy? Yeah. Yeah, the magician guy. Like, oh, yeah. He is spooky, actually. Very. Yeah, okay. I hear you. I will not make fun of you for that, Brenna. I hear you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of Luke, by the way. <laughs> the ghost one. So good. What do you think, Brenna? Oh, that was pretty cool. Not too much. Not too spooky. I like how everything looks miniature. Yeah. Everything does look miniature. There's a little bit of sh tilt shift lens action going on here. This is also, my, this is probably my favorite action. The bones. You know, that used to be my nickname when I was 14, you know. <laughs> Bonehead. Bones. Bones McGee. <laughs> bones Parson. <laughs> Uh, 
what have we? Graham, is that your like headboard? Of your bed? Yeah, I'm in bed right now. That's a pretty cool headboard. <laughs> Graham lives in the coolest place. <laughs> I dropped him off from New York, and it was very impressed. Um. Well, this is all you'll get to see because it goes downhill. <laughs> <laughs> outside this camera view. That's all right. Let's watch another one. How's the frame rate holding up for you guys? Is it worth it or is it like one frame a second? It's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. It felt pretty real time last one. Good. makes me want to buy a Vizio television right now. Monica would have died if she watched that. <laughs> Why? Just trypophobia. That's through holes, though. Not circles. What? She doesn't like little circles, either. <laughs> she doesn't like spheres? Yeah, I think she's... <clears throat> Did you say this, this video is kind of cool? You like that, Ben? Yeah. Yes. I'm going to do this right now before I forget. Thanks. Quick question. So is there a way to keyframe materials changing? Yes. Like morphing into another shape or, or material, I guess? It's, it's more of a way of masking from one material into the next, but yeah. Okay, cool. You can mask in... <laughs> You mask with like shader, let's see, shader fields. You kind of, you know how luma mats work in After Effects? Mm -hmm. You can kind of use that same concept for animating different textures in Cinema 4D. Hmm. Okay. Neat. I feel like yeah. it's just, like you could just do like if I ask, can you do this? You can you can do it, but I just yeah don't know how to it, do it. Anymore. Usually, the only question is how much is it going to cost you to buy the yeah. plugin. <laughs> Let's watch this one. It's a little more minimal and simple. Truth this is a lost. truth, and this is a lie. Don't be fooled by lies. They're usually presented as truths. We all know real truth cannot be built upon lies. But extreme repetition of lies can often lead us to believe that they are in fact truths. Nowadays, lies spread faster than truths. So unfortunately, we get caught up between truths and lies, between the few and the many. Always look out for truth instead. Verify it. Only then share it. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love that. Was that a joke? Oh, talk? The I material looks super great. A <laughs> what talk? Did you say general conference, Colton? Yeah. <laughs> it sounded like the prophet like speaking. Oh, it does. With like cool animation, like actually <laughs> cool. <laughs> Can you imagine if the animation was like that in a general conference talk? Uh, I'll be super happy to. I can't. Maybe that's why it's going to be unforgettable. Watch it instead of listen. To it. 
Have you been working with Elder Bednar, Ben, on his next talk, graphics? No. <laughs> I like the sound effects. Yeah, yeah, strong, strong sound. What's that? Someone else made a comment. Was it me or Brenna? You didn't hear. I don't yeah. remember. I think it was you, Deb. Oh, was um, you, Deb. were you talking about that rope, the like 3D like rope that he had like last year? Two conferences ago? Yes. Something with four, Cinema 4D in it. Something, I can't remember. Yeah, he, <clears throat> oh, he had uh, the topies there. It looked like a, an episode of Wild Kratz. <laughs> How many of you guys think you could make something like this? I can. I bet you could. I bet a lot of you could. What's that? You just need to have a super good computer in Octane. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Octane would help. Yeah, you guys know how to do all this stuff. Even this. This is awesome, right? Mm -hmm. That was a great transition. These these jawbreakers look delicious. Like, I want to eat one. So I guess it's a lie. Do you think the transition is they would turn and they just like merge two different video together and mix them like? Yes, I think that's definitely done in post in the compositing app, whether it's After Effects or whatever. Yeah. Guys, look. I have Dom's spider. <gasps> oh, what? That's a cool cage. It is. He's There's walking around. around. Harold the spider. Does he use like the hair to attack when he's nervous? Yeah, he has the urticating hairs. Urticating. When he feels, when he feels threatened, he like rubs his little arm and then they go and they stop. So, like, if there's like so many holes by the side, would it attack you? Hole? Like, there's like the hairs through the holes on the top. Oh. Like the hair oh, will okay. pings out from the hole and attack you. <laughs> Anything's possible, Ben. Oh, he's drinking water. <laughs> he's fun. What do you feed him? I'm babysitting him for Dom. <laughs> Where's Dom? She's in Oregon. I'm in Oregon. In Portland. Oh, cool. Hi. <laughs> They don't allow he's, spiders in Portland. He's so cute. What does he eat? Cockroaches. <laughs> yeah, Dom gave us a Tupperware of cockroaches to feed nope. Harold. Well, I want to see the cockroaches. Is it live or like dead? Yeah, I, I don't want to take them out. They're kind of Let's smelly. Let's not. Let's just do class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd rather not look at cockroaches right now. Harold's cute though. Ben, you can Google cockroaches. Like what kind of cockroaches? Is it like German cockroaches or like American cockroaches? <laughs> German cuisine. German ones are more sophisticated, let's be honest. <laughs> oh, they're the, like super horrifying, ugly to German one. The American one looks kind of better. How do you Maybe know so much about cockroaches? Who <laughs> <laughs> types? <laughs> I don't know anyway. if I've ever seen a German one, but I'm not going to look it up, Ben. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk for a moment. So basically what I want to do today, uh, did a couple of you want to go over materials, layering materials on an object? Was that a thing? Anyone? Uh, like, to I want to learn frosting glass. Is that? Oh, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Mm, I'd have to teach from an octane. Company. Also, like the cardboard, because cardboard can be kind of fuzzy, and I want to see how they did that. Cardboard, you're probably going to need a combination of normal or bump maps, displacement, as well as minimal usage of like hair objects. If you, I mean, it depends on how close you want to get to your cardboard. But if it's just regular distance, you could get away with normals, and bumps, and maybe uh, displacement maps. Um, I just, I think 
one of my maybe we already went over it but i'm not sure um like if i created my packaging label in illustrator and i have all my text and stuff mm -hmm. how do i can i bring that in as like a flat image and wrap it okay yeah 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 we can do that today we'll do it from scratch we'll make a simple label in illustrator and we'll go in and we'll talk about alpha channels and how to stack up it's pretty easy you just stack them up from okay. left to right cool so we'll do that. I wanted to point out some things that I've added to Learning Suite. I will share my screen. <laughs> what do you say when someone hiccups? Do you say bless you? I've gotten that before. Yeah. I accept it. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to reject it, right? I mean, like, no. how dare you? <laughs> Learning Suite is ultra jank today. Yes. And yesterday. Came and test. yesterday. Like, I don't know what's happening right now, but you're looking at the grades of my 380 students. Ooh. Oh, something changed. So I added some links to some research on COVID-19. I'm just trying to pull up the schedule for our dang class so I can tell you where it is. Do any of you see it on your learning suite? There's a long list of links to research articles and information graphics. <clears throat> I have not looked. Should I go look? <laughs> yeah, if Learning Suite, oh, if Learning Suite comes up for you, let's look at it together. I think in about 10 minutes, this will switch over to the schedule. By the way, I have grades on my list of things to do for you guys. Not that it matters. I mean, pass fail nowadays, right? <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Like, why are we even here? You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so i didn't put them on the same day maybe i should put them on the same day i'm going to drag links for information graphic final projects under today's date so go ahead and refresh your browser so under today's date you will see both information graphic links and a list of instagrams that I feel have nice graphic 3D stylings for you to be inspired by for this project. And I believe Gavin linked us to Lucas Zanotto the other day in class last week. The lit match animation that Deb hates. <laughs> It is effective. That's why so many people are sharing it. It's just maybe a little overexposed, right, Deb? Wait, what animation is this? <laughs> are we talking about? Are go we ahead and click. <laughs> go ahead and click on the lit match animation. Can it's you guys good. see this? Every yeah. Day. Oh. Uh, whoop. What? Stop the spread. Is there a way to do the... What's that? How do you make fire in cinema? Oh, fire is difficult to do without plugins. This kind of looks, it looks pretty real, doesn't it? But it, it's probably a turbulence FD. There's a fluid simulator called Turbulence FD that's really good for fire. X Particles is trying to become really good at fire also, but this was probably done with Turbulence. Again, it can all be done, it's just how much money do you want to spend on plugins. Or just focus on things that you have in uh, cinema.
Okay. Let's see, anything that we should look at now? Bees and bombs, if you haven't seen that already, daily minimal, that's not 3D, that's 2D, but some good minimal ideas. This, for some reason, has really taken off and is been, has been shared many, many, many times, but it, it's super simple. Um, what was that? You sort of broke up there, Ben. Oh, uh, is it? It is kind of important right now. Very important, that. right? <laughs> Some of these New York Times interactive department does a really great job, generally speaking. Here's a little animation. Spooky. Uh, the one, I think the one on Washington Post is the one that I was referring to you guys where I was like, they did it in uh, processing. Let's see mm -hmm. if I can pull that up. Corona simulator. Corona. <laughs> Sounds like something you wouldn't want to go to, but it's actually. Yeah, these little animations are great. This is what we don't want to happen. Oh no, this is what we do want to happen. Those are recovered. This oh, is flattening. It's getting better. better. That's something. Good. <laughs> Why don't we want this? <laughs> JK. You know, just like remind me of like, um, have you guys seen like Harry Potter? Yes. You know, like in that like um, vault, like the thing that like they touch, like the silverware, they would like pop and like multiply themselves, sort of thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I just like feel like that is like part of like what I imagine sort of like the disease is like in the beginning is like kind of slower, but like it just like grow like super fast at the end and like everyone's like drowning and dying. Yeah. Aren't there like really hot brass goblets or something, silver goblets in Harry Potter that they all get burned by? See, this is the social distancing graph. When people stay in place and don't bump into other people, the infection rate stays much lower. Mm. Mm. So this is kind of a data viz project. It's kind of an information graphics project, and it is definitely a chance for you to flex your 3D project but it needs to be a compelling story and you can use whatever graphic means you see fit as long as it communicates. I mean, what I mean by that is you can go abstract, you can go more uh, analog handmade. So let's look at some of these people. 36 days of type is already on V. So this is a very, oh, you've probably, have we watched this before? This one's really Can you guys hear the music too? Yeah. Yeah. So I can see something like this, but that tells a story that uses, has data. You know, it's not just abstraction like most of these are, but how do you want to represent the data concepts that you're 
This looks like it could be a, a data viz. <laughs> What's that? Is that done by like stimulation? It is. I noticed one of the comments said the music is ruining the sound design, and I agree. I kind of just mm -hmm. want to hear the little cylinders getting chopped. So these fall into the genre of probably those satisfying videos that we see. Yeah. ASMR. Uh, which is, yeah, which is totally fine for something like this, but it just needs to be in service of your message, whatever that might be. Yeah, this guy's great. He's got a lot of those things. Very geometric, hard surface modeling with a little bit of toothpaste. Andreas Van Ashtet, 615,000 followers. Still not as many as Morgan, right? Am I right, Morgan? <laughs> Morgan's not saying anything. She must only be at 614. I just have a question, Brent. Yes. So for the one that we just saw with like, the stick like rotating and then the ball just like comes out and like they never hit the stick and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, how do they control the stimulation? Like, like, how do they control so precisely? So much planning and math ahead of time. There's math? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to divide time. It's probably takes trigonometry. I don't know. It's... That's above my, <laughs> what was that? It's above you, you need to teach us how to do it, Brent. <laughs> no, I usually figure it out by trial and error, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's it's not, uh, that one isn't super complicated math. Here, should, we, should we go back? To, are you talking about the one where the cylinders got shaved off? No. Oh, you're talking about the this one, this one. Yeah. Yeah, so you have to divide the total length of time. If you want it to loop, which yours needs to loop, you have to work with the total amount of time, and then you have to work with divisible divisions. What's what's the math word I'm thinking of? Uh, factor? What's the... How many times? Multiples? Or multiples, wait. yeah, you can divide by. So like... Yeah, divisions of... Pies. Yeah, so some of these are going faster than others, right? But they all have to be a unit that evenly divides into the total amount of time. Like if it's 15 frames or 30 frames and the total is 90 or 120 frames, you have to make sure you work in that divisible, that divisor. That's the word I was looking for. The divisor has to fit evenly without being halved or, you know, no decimal points, all whole integers here. Um, once you figure that out, uh, your loops work better. But as far as figuring out what is not going to collide, that is probably a matter of a lot of trial and error. And like, how do they like control the ball going certain track? Does it make sense? Because there's like no, there's no like like a, like a track for it, but it's just kind of like a plane. Like how do they like? Because it is it's, a stimulation. It's not like a frame by frame, right? It's not frame by frame, but I have a feeling it might actually be animated with keyframes. Because obviously, you could have the little flower object, the cylindrical object with arms, be a rigid body. You could do dynamics, but they're controlling the flight of the balls so tightly that I think it's just keyframed. And so if you looked really, really closely at it, you'd see that the ball isn't actually reacting to the surface. It just looks like it is. I think it's a simulated dynamics. 
Because like, it would be. How, do, could you like teach us how to like, for example, if I wanted to move this object according to the track that I created, but like it looks path. like simulation going down instead of like I'm just like moving it. Yeah, the thing that gives it away for me is that it doesn't look like dynamics, the way the balls are flying up in the air. I, it looks keyframed and eased to me. So what you would do, and maybe once we get into C4D, hey, look, Gavin's outside. I could show you how to, once you get a basic motion path down, how to manipulate those handles, because it would be some precision keyframing and handle uh, manipulation. That's all this is. But it's it's very, it's going to be more manual than you think, Ben. It's not like he's programmed the dynamic simulation to have the balls go to that height. At least I, I'm i 95% sure that it's keyframe. Mm, cool. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's everything Brent says. Follow it. Follow it. Turn the sound off on Instagram. There's no, there's no controls. That's a pretty, pretty elegant way to show a virus being passed along. Just saying. Although you don't want to make the virus look beautiful. Why not? <laughs> I guess I'll leave that up to you. You can take. As long as you can support your point of view, Ben, you can feel free to do whatever. I'm just topic. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting ethical thing, though. Yeah. Do you, if you're one of the people that believe that the virus was a hoax perpetrated by the Democrats, um, you could show that in your information graphics. Hopefully, nobody does that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, snakes, snake fans. Snake yeah, fans. Hey, I would love to have to a do that for the motion posters because it was supposed to be a conservative, like, news, <laughs> news source. You could have, yes, you could have done how the coronavirus is a hoax. This one's like a snake is pole dancing, it is. <laughs> An so the, the, we, the assignment has to be literal. It cannot be like abstract, interpreted. No, it can. It can. Maybe we should revisit the description uh, before we. I don't want to take too much time on this since we wanted to do a little bit of materials, but information graphics. I think I put the description in here, didn't I? Yes. Yeah, so you can make. Uh, research-based, fact-supported, political, social, or arts-related statement, or you can make a reflective, semi-fictional, whimsical, psychological treatise, like, what's your state of mind? Is your mental state just imploding on itself now that you've been inside for like 20 days straight, Ben? So it can be data, it can be data viz, or it can be story based, but it all should be under the umbrella of the quarantine of COVID-19. Your fears, your facts, your hopes for coronavirus. What questions Ooh. do you have on the requirements for this project? What are the what are the dimensions again? Sorry. You know, it's it's sort of ready made for Instagram. I would probably go eight hundred by eight hundred. I should put that in. Here. How many of them we have to make again? Sorry. At least three five second infographic loops, but no more than cool. five. That's exciting. Let's see. I'm going to recommend render render at 
800 by 800. The great thing about cinema is that you can render it out at any resolution. It's kind of like all of your shapes are vectors and you can export them to any resolution. So I'd, I'd go for 800 by 800. Okay. Let me see if we can do the frosted thing in cinema. Luke, you don't have to happen to have any examples on hand of frosted glass textures in cinema, do you? We could whip one up real quick if not. There we go. I was muted. Um, <laughs> I let me think. I guess I'm just thinking you'd do glass with some bump on it to start. Yeah. I'm trying to think of some examples. So. I think we can do it. And I think that will double as our stacking materials lesson. Nice. And then, uh, I don't know if you noticed the sign up sheet on today's date on learning suite, but we already got appointment slots for talking about packaging. There is a frosted glass material in Cinema 4D. Is a preset? Yeah. Okay, well, let's maybe explore. We can use that for sure. And then depending on how they made it, we might be able to, is it a, here, I'm gonna share Cinema 4D here. I just saw Rachel's contribution to the mathematical <laughs> discussion. Dividends is another one. Divisor, dividends. This is why we don't usually uh, talk about math. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Can you see my C4D? Yep. Let's start with a cylinder. How many of you guys know how to get rounded edges on a cylinder's caps? You have to do like the fillet thing and then up the segments, right? Correct. Fillet or fillet. We're going to give ourselves more rotation segments. We're going to go 32 to smooth that out a bit. All right, so now we don't have a perfectly sharp cylinder. So let's apply some materials to this here. I'm going to get you guys my gallery out of the way. And let me see what I can find here as far as frosted glass. We can certainly roughen it up if need be. Okay, here's some frosted glass. And it looks like, okay, so this is, this this will work. It's just using transparency and reflectance and it's using 30% roughness on a Beckman type reflection. So that's something that we could have mixed up ourselves. Um, yeah, transparency, it looks like the refraction, we, we've talked about refraction index. This is based on real world math and physics. Uh, it seems like glass is 1.5 and is water 1.3 refraction index. It's something you can look up. You can Google refractive index of glass or plexiglass or whatever it is that you're making. Yeah, Wikipedia has a page of like, like if you're making a diamond, you can look up the refraction index of actual diamonds and type it in. It's supposed to look good. For maximum realism. And then let's, so if you guys did need to make, let's say you, you didn't have the glass in your content browser, how would you mix up glass what would be your first step 
or under here under the material editor, where would you go? You turn off color transparency. Turn on transparency. Look at that. As soon as we turn it on, what do we have there? It looks like is one. It point... looks like a drop of water. Yeah. Let me did you guys let's go with a rounded cube here. Okay, that's pretty good. Whoa. Don't you guys we've gone over this, right? You can change the sphere. Yeah. Double torus is a popular one. Let's go, let's go back to sphere. Okay, so just by simply checking transparency, uh, if you want it to be frosted, you could just add some roughness. Uh, where is roughness? Does it not? Oh, it's in the reflection. It's, yeah. And the no. transparency. You have to. So don't neglect your layers stack here. Thank you, Luke. Uh, at the top no section of our reflectance channel, uh, these layers make a huge difference. You, most of the time when you watch a tutorial like on uh, Grayscale Gorilla, they just def they delete or turn off the default specular. I kind of like how it gives a little bit of milkiness to the glass. I'm going to leave it on. But yeah, you have to se uh, select the transparency and then it gives you the ability to make it frosted. But we're not going to make ours frosted. We're just going to call ours glass. And I'm going to change the name of my frosted glass. Instead of glass frosted, frosted glass. Because when you only have like one, eight characters that you can see in the material editor. There we go. You know, maybe we don't even, well, we probably do want to do the Illustrator from Illustrator to PNG to Cinema 4D. But there is a way to mask out using just uh, non-destructive means. So what people generally want to do is have a frosted container that you can see through clear glass to the what's inside, right? So if we were to stack those two textures, we would want glass first. Here, let me go back to my object manager. Let me get rid of frosted. Let's see how much of our OpenGL preview we can turn on here. Wait, so how do you make the frosted glass again? Or you are just using the one that they have? I used a preset, but we did go over how to make it if you have just regular glass in the transparency, uh, sorry, in the reflectance channel. Does transparency have roughness too? So you just turn off the roughness, that's it? Yeah, pretty much, but you have to make sure you select the transparency property in this layer stack here, and then you just bump up the roughness, yes. I'm gonna take that down to five, actually. Smooth glass. So we have, let's see, let me just double check. Okay, we have glass now. I wanted to turn on transparency. Let's see, enhanced OpenGL is on. Shadows. Wait, what are you doing? I'm turning on like cinema in the last couple versions has made it much easier to preview materials and shadows and things with all of these open GL properties like noises, shadows, transparency. I don't think we need tessellation. We certainly don't need depth of field right now. Uh, but since we don't have a light, it doesn't look very good. So let me go ahead and make a floor, a plane. There we go. It's starting to look oh, better wow. already. I didn't know I could do this. Yeah, and I think it was an R19 where they came out with all these OpenGL properties in the viewport. So you have to render less often. Cool. And it's going to struggle with glass, but let's try getting a light in here. An area light. Wow. Yeah, maybe we should have gone over this before. I hardly ever use it because when you're in Octane, you don't really need it. But if you're just on your laptop on a Mac, you do need it. Uh, change to 50 by 50. And where's our shadows? Oops. 
I might not be able to handle the proper shadows. <laughs> Yeah, it's not not doing well with shadow. And who was it that I was? I think it was Beth, maybe. When you do get that really annoying line from area lights and area shadows, the way you prevent that is by going to details, fall off angle, and just set it to zero. Then you don't get that sort of gradient line. So yeah, it's not handling my shadows very well. Tessellation's not going to help us with that. Oops. Noises, maybe? Nope. Okay, anyway, that shadow's super annoying, so I'm going to turn that off. Under shadow, uh, sorry, light. General shadow none. All right, let's go ahead and stack some frosted glass on top of this, and I'm going to show you how you can use just a gradient or some other non destructive way of creating color. So let's drag that on top, and as you can see, actually, this doesn't do anything when I zoom in, does it? I'm not, I'm not zooming in on your screens right now. That's unfortunate. Looks great on my screen, trust me. So as you stack from left to right, rightmost is on top, leftmost is on bottom. So right now our frosted is overlapping our regular glass on our cylinder. We want to go into our frosted glass, and I want to load into my alpha. Alpha means transparency, right? So I want to go into my alpha, activate alpha, go to the texture drop down, and add in a gradient. And I want to click the gradient button. And I want to, oh, that's interesting. I want to flip down this tiny, tiny little triangle right here. That's a super important triangle because it gives you these gradient options. And I want to select my knots. And I want to go, I think I only need to select one, but go to interpolation and change it to step. Because what that does is it basically prevents the blend and it just gives me two colors. And what happens with alpha channels when you have black and what happens with you and when you have white, like on a Photoshop layer mask? What does white mean and what does black mean? Whites mean reveal and black means hide. Yep. White reveal, black conceal. And as you can see, well, you can't really see it that well in here, but let's see what this does to, let's, oh, look, it worked. I'm going to go ahead and render this. So ha our frosted is a little bit too frosted because you can't even, can you tell that this is frosted glass? Yeah, that looks cool. I'm gonna render. Oh yeah, you can see a little bit of the, the grain and the noise of the frost. And this side is perfectly clear glass. So the yeah, that's the basic concept is using black and white values to hide one texture over the top of another texture. But I think what we should do now is just open up Illustrator real quick and make some typography. Or maybe we could do it in Photoshop to save us some steps. I've already got Illustrator open, so. All right, here, let me zoom out. I'm gonna cancel that render. So if we didn't want it to be vertical half like that, we could come over here to our frosted uh, material tag. And we could come down here. Actually, you know what we'd have to do? Let's go back into our frosted material and change the gradient from 2D U to 2D V. 
which means it is making the gradient follow a vertical line instead of a horizontal line. I'm not exactly sure. Do you know what U and V stand for, Luke? Like, why is U, V? Why, v is vertical, but what's U? I've always wondered the same thing myself, actually. Because <laughs> when you're moving your material around with, like, you and like when you're using uh, UVW mapping and you're like scooting your material, it uses U and V as well for. Yeah, V is easy to remember because vertical, but U is horizontal, so it's always confused me. Maybe it's okay. un vertical. Un vertical? I think you're right, Jared. Very not vertical. And then you can change, of course, the position of the gradient with offset. If you want more frost, yeah, that's cool. Frosted tips. I got frosted tips on my cylinder. Okay, what questions do you have so far? What if you want to put like a, like if you want it to be like a pattern, not like, like if I wanted my frosted glass to have like a grid in it. Mm -hmm. You should design the pattern tile, a, a repeatable pattern tile in Photoshop or Illustrator. And then when it tiles it up, because Cinema always wants to tile. By default, it's tiling and you have to turn that off. So let's put, let's just put some text on this glass cylinder, shall we? And then I can show you. Do you remember the patterns we made in 280, Morgan? The repeatable pattern tiles? No. Did you take 280 from me? Uh-huh. What the heck? We didn't have it for your class because it was for spring. <laughs> oh, what? We didn't do it, Morgan. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> we didn't do patterns. Fine. Yeah, you need okay, a, got an answer. <laughs> you got you have some info. So like X, Y, and Z are your different planes in cinema. Uh -huh. And U, V, and W are kind of similar, but they're like the preceding letters. And so um, U is width, V is height, and W is depth. So in U, V, W mapping, the U and V are part of that. Movie. Anyway. That's crazy. <laughs> Why? Why? Why did they decide to go with that? Agreed. I like unvertical better. Unvertical. I'm going with Jared's. Thank you, Luke. So it's, sure. the, it's literally just the letters before? That's what some people are speculating in CG talk. <laughs> B, W, X, Y, Z, yeah. <laughs> That's number Six, that's number, yeah, I can't do math right now, but I think it's like 20 through 23. Okay, let me switch over to Illustrator real quick, so you're just not wondering why my cinema is just sitting there. Okay, if you want to play along at home, let's just make, all right, so we want to put a hole, we want to have clear show through our frosted, right? So we are going to need what color type and what color background on our type. We want to mask out the frosted. We want to hide the frost on our, with our graphic. Black conceals, white reveals. Yeah. <laughs> 
can never go wrong with alternate Gothic. Here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna explode our eight and a half by 11. Actually, I think I'm gonna leave all this, all these pixels out here. Okay, we're, I like to use PNG when I import bitmaps into Cinema 4D. Do you ever use PSDs in Cinema 4D, Luke, when you import for alpha? Yeah, I have. Um, I've had them not work, but, and I've had them work depending on the version, but that I haven't tried it in R21. So. I haven't either, so I'm gonna go with a, the old standby, which is a black and white PNG. So I want to export this, command E, and I'm going to call it unvertical text. Uh, let's see. You want to export at pretty high resolution. I'm going to go with 300 DPI here. Background color, I do actually want to be white in this case. Oh, that's interesting. It didn't save any of my outer pixels. Well, let's see if we can still use it. Okay, I now have a PNG, so let's stop sharing Illustrator. Let's go back to Cinema. And let's make a, hmm, I wonder, let's just use our frosted, our frosted texture that we have, because I, I think this is going to be a simple example. All right, so I plugged in the gradient to alpha, but I don't want that anymore. So I'm going to clear that and import my image that I just made. My image that I just made is called unverticaltext.png. No. Okay, it looks like it's working, but the scale is all off. Wait, so this is just on the alpha channel and you just yeah, in the texture I, box? I loaded my PNG into the texture dropdown of my alpha. Great. Sorry, do you have to do this as well? Like, do you have to do the gradient section as well or no? No, I, I just deleted the gradient. The gradient is just, I was just showing you what those stripes would do or what a half oh, and oh. half. Would do. Okay, so yeah, cool. we were we replaced the gradient with our image that has type on it. Okay, cool. And now let's go back and see what's going on here. Nothing good, nothing good. Let's select our frosted tag again, and we're going to need to set that to zero, and it looks like we're going to need to scale along the V, and it looks like it's back backwards no it's not backwards but we do want to uncheck tile and it looks like it's only observing the bounds of the image so we might need to fix that it's actually a pretty good guess on the scaling you might be able to invert the alpha too, and I think it might. Or no, then you'd have to invert the picture too, never mind. Yeah, so this is actually a good problem because all of you will have this. So the easiest way, obviously, is just to give yourself enough pixels so you don't have to worry about. You see what's happening here? The only part that is frosted is the white on my image. And if I wanted everything to be frosted except for this, let's see. Too bad alpha, this window doesn't give you a layer. Actually, I think it does if you do it in a 
Photoshop. Oh, that worked. The invert did? Right. It did. It did the opposite of what we want, though. So what I'm going oh, to do God. is invert my image. So I'm going to edit this real quick, like. Can you invert in preview? I don't know. Doesn't look like it. Fine, I'll open up Photoshop. So if, if it's your goal to have the letters themselves be frosted, then you're done. But if you actually wanted the letters to be the windows to the clear, then we're going to need to go into Photoshop and invert our image, save. Let's see, it looks like I have a little bit of, nope, we're good. Save it and come back to Cinema 4D and it automatically updated it. And now, oh wait, no. When I have to uninvert it in the material, right? <laughs> that's, that's right. Oh, but that puts us back where we were. What? Oh, hang on. A, it did not. I, I have to re reload it. Oh. I was like, it updated, but it didn't really. Okay. What's going on here? My text, my background is now black. Okay, I'm going to make this, I'm going to force this to work. I'm going to go into Photoshop and I'm going to add pixels to my image. Yeah. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? I'm in Photoshop. I'm canvas size increasing the width and the height. I'm adding a lot of height, 5,000 pixels of height. Oops. Okay. Flatten, save. Okay, so I still have the same file and it does not automatically update. So I need to go back into my material and I'm going to reload my new larger image. It still looks like it's cropping it though. I've never seen this behavior before. Sure, let's put it in. The, okay, it worked. It wor It liked that better, that I did put it in the project search path. All right, so now that I've got those extra pixels in there, I can just go back and undo some of the scaling we did. Sorry, that's offset. Scaling we did. So you're adjusting it in the material? the material tag. Okay. I have the material tag selected and I'm adjusting the offset and the scaling. I want to okay. offset it along you to bring this over here. Let's see if this is doing what we want or if it's doing the opposite still. Looks like it's still doing the opposite. So let me unvert, uninvert in my alpha channel. There we go. Okay, finally, 
we now have frosted outside and clear letters that show us the clear glass. And let me let me just put another colored cylinder inside of here just to drive the point home. You know what, let's just take both of these cylinders and center them. Oops. Fillet and new color. What color should we make the juice inside? Red? Is it Kool-Aid? Pink. Is it upscale? Upscale Kool-Aid. What's that? Ink? Pink. Pink. Pepto. <laughs> I'm always willing to use strawberry on a project. All right, let's see what this does. Let me render it. Mm, it's not as impressive. It would be more impressive in Octane. Why is that? Like it's really I think it's actually some, there's some distortion happening with this cylinder. Let me try to make this cylinder smaller. Oh, that's the radius stuff. No wonder it didn't change anything. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's working more like it should. Yeah, there's a lot of distortion. It's a solid piece of glass and it's got another solid inside of it. So yeah, it's working now. So you can stack materials, you can mix your own glass, you can mix your own frosted glass, all in cinema without using presets. Although, why not use presets if it saves you a little time? If you know how to customize them, go for it. Wait, so I'm trying to like render view mine. Mm -hmm. and it's definitely going a lot slower. Is there a way I can change the tags that you changed? Well, if you're just talking about speed of render, it's just how many cores you have in your machine, really. So you have many cores? I think this laptop has many, many cores. Mm. So, yeah, as far as speeding up glass renders, yeah. I, I don't think there's much you can do. Okay. Coach Brennan, I have a question. Yeah. So uh, what is this I've... I, I've I've rumored to hear this thing called team render. Is that, is that real? And is that something that actually works? It is real. I'm not sure if it works with the academic free licenses though, but it's, it's a render farm essentially. If you have right. more than one, one machine, you can install just the, the team render engine on it. And, it can and then share. you can use those machines, right? Yeah. You can use them as slave machines to render out frames and it, it it doesn't you know i don't know if you guys know how render farms work but it's not like it adds superpowers to your machine it just sort of shares the load because you, you're supposed to when you render movies you're supposed to render stills and what it does is each machine is just rendering stills and it does the math and threads them all together in the same folder over a network so if you have you know 10 machines sitting around your house you could get network uh, team rendering working but yeah, unfortunately, I do not think it works with educational licenses. Okay. 
That's the way of pay for the render farm rentals. Though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the thing that you change for the to get rid of the light shadow thing that you were talking about? Oh, on area shadows. Yeah. Yes, it's under details. Okay. And it is fall off angle. It's at 180 by default, but I switch it to zero, and it gets rid of that gradient line. Okay. Thank you. Okay, how many of you guys are being daring and going in and using the Octane machines? I wouldn't no. recommend it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you to, I'm not recommending that you do it. I'm recommending you go out and buy a Windows machine and install Octane at home. You want to pay for it? We're about to get that big, big uh, government check, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do it, friends. <laughs> Check for a Windows Tower. Make sure you get at least two graphics cards. Someone had a question in there. Nobody? Okay. Well, let's go to individual appointments and talk about your packaging unless you have more questions that could be beneficial for the group. Um, like, I'm probably not doing glass for this project but if i wanted to refer back to this video later how do i like find the recorded version of it it's on youtube i will put it on this day on learning suite okay. i have been put i put two up wait did i put two up just check yeah i've got uh, the 18th and the 23rd those videos are on the class day on Learning Suite. So I will do the same for today's tutorial. Cool. I haven't checked Learning Suite in a while, so I'll do that. <laughs> it's about time, Colton. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, if you haven't already signed up for an individual appointment, the link is there on Learning Suite under today's date. And it looks like, yeah, we're starting at 3.20. So I'm going to eliminate these to avoid confusion. And if we need to add a 4.10 and a 4, 4.20, bruh. Please it. Mm, do I dare do 4.30? Now let's see how this fills in. Is the learning suite working? Eh, sort of. It's working very slowly. I was trying to get in the whole morning and just like stuck. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. So if anybody can point me toward a Google Sheets plugin or extension that makes timed intervals easier to input, I'll give you ten dollars. Well, I could use ten dollars. <laughs> I've been looking for. I know Canvas has a way to do it, but you have to use Canvas and not Learning Suite. Huh. I just did it with hours. I'm trying to see how you could do it with ten minute increments. How did you do it with hours? You just put in a thing and then drag the bottom of the box down. Oops, I just deleted a bunch of columns if you're wondering why everything shifted. Um, let's do the tithing settlement thing. If you can sign up with the majority <laughs> of the people, <laughs> that'd be better. <laughs> Then um, I can totally do 4:30, but if it if it's all the same to you, um, yeah, just do it now if you want to. Oh no, do you, would you mind going right after Morgan? Well, yeah, like what time is Morgan? Then uh, 3:40.
Are you looking at the Google Sheet, Ben? Uh, I just, uh, one second. Yeah, what time is after Morgan again, sorry? Uh, 3.40. Yeah, I can do 3.40. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, I, I would like all of you so to do we just sign hop back in here at 3.40? We're gonna do, Luke, do you want to do the, the breakout room again, or do you wanna? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. So yeah, you'll come back to Luke's, How's that gonna work? Once I add you to a breakout room, can you get in at any time? I could just make a custom, I could just email out a custom meeting link for people. That'd probably be the easiest time. Huh? Yeah, do you wanna do that? Yeah, yeah no, you can do that, okay. Does that work then? Yeah, okay. text me, Luke. Okay. So my people watch the sheet. What I'll do is so you don't come in and it's like, oh, I'm still talking to the previous person is I will put a, I'm ready, like I'll write this, ready in green by your name and then you'll know. I Does that sound that. good? That seemed to work well in uh, 380. Cool. So for example, next to Beth, I'm gonna say ready. And then Brenna, Colton, and Jared will come back at their times. Wait, where do we see this ready thing? Is this just also in the participants? Sorry, I'm just it confused. It is in the Google Sheet. It's in the Google Sheet. Oh, OK. <laughs> All right, I'm going to sign out and send out the invite. See you guys. Yay. Sweet. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Bye, Beth. everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> See you, Dom.